Let us give God a mighty hand clap and take our seats in the presence of the Lord. But please continue in the spirit, continue with the presence that is here today. Heavy, even without touching you, I'm telling you, he's touching you. If only you can open up and submit to him, that area. Be very honest with him. That pain will go. That condition will die. That situation will evaporate. And that longing, long-standing issue today will dissolve. Nothing is impossible with him. Hallelujah. The year 2022. And August 2022. Godly prosperity is my inheritance in Godly prosperity. The prosperity which is of God. He prospers us in every way. Hallelujah. Whether it is mentally, spiritually, financially, physically, in our marriages, in health, in our academics, only him can prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, being a healing and delivering school, I want us to look into something that is very interesting that the Lord has placed upon my heart. I have to say, these are not my words, but his own words. He came to me and revealed uh, towards the end of last month, July, and spoke to me heavily concerning what I want to share today. And I felt this burden for the past couple of days. And I feel that the Lord wants us to hear these things. Remember, he has made a covenant with us, the covenant of help. Hallelujah. Amen. It still burdens every time we know that God has given us all things, but yet these old things are not reflecting in our lives. Hallelujah. The question would be, why is it that I am blessed, yet the blessing doesn't show in me, doesn't show around me, doesn't show in my environment? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we want to look at those things that hinder your prosperity. And this is not anything new that I'm going to share today. You've heard it before. But may you just give me your ears for a few minutes and listen to what the Lord is saying concerning this. Hallelujah. Time will defeat me to share everything, but according to how he leads us and where we end, please, I pray that we walk together. Hallelujah. The things I'm going to say may be a bit heavy and uh, destabilizing some of us, or if not all of us, but I pray that God gives you grace to receive, because the word of God is life. Every time we receive, we receive life, because it says man shall live by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So it comes to prosper us. Hallelujah. So today, we want to look at this topic that is called hypocrisy in the kingdom of God. Hypocrisy in the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. From the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verses 25. The Bible says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat. Or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat or food? The body than the clothing or raiment? NIV, please. Uh, the Bible says in verses 26 Therefore I tell you, look at the buds of the, of the air. They do not sow, meaning they don't plant. Neither do they reap because they don't sow. Or store away in stores. Hallelujah. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are, are, are you following? 
The Bible says, are you not much more valuable than they? He says, look at the birds of the air. Meaning, you must take time to look, not looking in terms of seeing, I seeing. He's saying, observe and study them. And some of the things he's telling you should look at critically, that they do not plant, neither do they harvest, neither do they store away food. Whether there is COVID or not, or winter or summer, they don't do that. But the Bible is telling us that yet your heavenly father feeds them. Meaning they've never gone a single day without food. Remember they don't store. They don't store food. That means they have to feed every day. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't store, but they feed. And God is telling us he feeds them every day. Then he goes on to put a statement, a challenge to me and you. Are you not much more valuable than they? Or oh, some people come to the Lord and speak things that are very interesting and funny. God is saying, you are more valuable. But have you ever seen value in yourself? Have you ever seen value in you? Or are you still speaking like them that do not know who they are? I'm just flesh and blood. Some of the statements we speak. I am poor. Things are bad. How can things be bad and at the same time you're valuable? There is something wrong. Hallelujah. And it's the Lord Jesus speaking these words. Are you not much more valuable than they? Even birds carry value. That's why he feed them. But are you not much more valuable than they? Give me verse number 27. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's something for you to ponder upon. Who of you by worrying? Somebody is full of value, but at the same time is worried about tomorrow, about the next moment, about this and that. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? So he's literally telling you what worrying does, it reduces your time. It reduces your life than adding life to you. When you're in worry, you can't add, you can't increase, you can't improve, you can't become that which you ought to be. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Every day and every time, worry comes your way. It comes to reduce you. That's why he says, I will restore the years that the kankawam has eaten. This is exactly what happens. Worry comes and reduces you. So it acts like an agent of death. Indeed it is death. So death does not happen the day a person dies physically. Death is a process. Hallelujah. Give me the scripture. The Bible says in verse 28, Hallelujah. And why do you worry about clothes? Why do you worry about? Meaning clothes have a way and a means of communication, a language they speak. To a point that they are hard. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is where they communicate in such a way that their voice is heard by you. To the point that they bring to you to a level of worrying about clothing. Clothing. Why do you worry about? Then he goes on to say, see the lilies of the field. See the lilies. See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor. See how the beautiful flowers of the field grow. He says, they don't labor. Uh -huh. 
The Bible says in verse 29, Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of those. So meaning, there are flowers in the field, but before God they are dressed, they are not even naked. So it's an insult for a child of God to be naked. Every time you're worrying about clothing, what you're trying to do, and you're exposing yourself, you are making yourself naked spiritually. You become a target. You have undressed yourself of the armor, which is the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's only telling you who has told you you're naked. That you should begin to worry about clothing. It must be a demonic spirit like how it worked in the garden. That's the question he asked them. Who said you are naked? Who told you? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? Next line. Let's continue. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Look at their lifespan. They carry value, but this is how they live. Today they are here, tomorrow they are gone. He says, for you, you carry value. Yours is not a case of today you're here and then tomorrow you're gone. Yours should be eternal like him. Not today you appear, then tomorrow you're out. Today you're good, wise, and all tomorrow you, they find you amongst those who... Uh -uh. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today you're healthy, tomorrow you're sick. That's not... No, no, no. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He says, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So he's saying... Go and observe the flowers in the field. Are they naked? If they are not naked, he says, none of them works to even be dressed, but they are dressed. How much more you? So go and study. Hallelujah. And he says the issue here is little faith. What does he mean by little faith? Continue, verses 31. The Bible says, so do not worry. So it's an instruction. It's a command. Do not, do not, worry. he's saying things that will bring worry exist and they will come. But he says, do not, voices that will come to challenge you will come, but do not, worry. praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not, worry. what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? The Bible says in verse 32, For the pagans, the Gentiles, those who know not God, those who do not believe in God, those who do not serve God, for the pagans run after all these things, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. What is driving them worry and fear? They are too careful about what to wear, what to drink, what to eat, and all those things. And because of this fear and worry. They are driven to look and seek for these things. So the thing that causes those who do not know God, the pagans, to go into workplaces, marketplace and all is not that they love to work, but because of fear and worry. Fear and worry. You see a man waking up in the morning Staying up the whole night, thinking they are hardworking because they love work. No, something else is driving them. It's called worry, fear. And because of that fear, they cannot have rest but seek after these things. Go, thinking that satisfaction and peace is when I have good drinking, when I have good eating, when I dress well like Solomon and the rest of them. Yet none of these things give peace and that satisfaction. So he's warning us and says that do not worry, but let the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. 
the same way birds are valuable to him and he knows that they need to feed he knows that you need these things he knows that you need he knows are you with me he knows that you need all these that you, the pagans are running after. And because he knows that you need them, therefore he's not going to withhold these things from you. He wants you to have these things. He wants you to have good lodging, a nice house, good dresses and whatever it is that you want, drink. The, these are metaphors. When he says eat, drink, and all, he's talking about the things you need in your life. Whether it is health, whether it is marriage, whether it is education, whether it is peace, joy, these are the things he's talking about here. Others have a way of looking for them. And the thing that drives them to access or look for these things is fear. Fear. May you not be worried a single day. Because don't be driven into prayer by fear. Some people are asking God for these things, but it is fear driving them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So they're going on their knees, but the issue is rent is coming soon. And it's not the voice of rent, it's the voice of worry. That's why he says, oh, you of little faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I know that you have need of these things. And I know, number two, how you can access these things that you need. That is now the next verse in King James. The Bible says, but seek first his kingdom, but seek first his... King James, King James, take me back to King James. But seek you first the kingdom. The pagans and Gentiles seek first, drink, eat, dressing and all those things. But for you, because you're valuable to me, you carry value. I am showing you a way that these things can come to you without you having run after them. He says, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. All these things shall be added. So meaning he wants you to have these things. He wants you to have these he wants you to have everything you desire. But the way to access them is you seeking first the kingdom. May you be driven by the desire for the kingdom and righteousness. Then these things shall be added to you. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now my preaching is beginning from here now. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This has just been a cut and razor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek first the kingdom. Look at the statements that Jesus used. The words, the nouns. But seek you first. Give me the scripture. But seek you. You. The word there is you. Not we. You. Personal. Praise the Lord. And then he says first. Not the other first of quick. First, F-I-R-S-T. Number one, let, if it is you, you want money, you want a promotion, you want marriage, you want anything that is good, he says it is yours. The root is seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. If you make a decision to seek the kingdom first and righteousness, the kingdom and righteousness will be given you as a gift because you have sought. When you seek, you shall find. Then these things are delivered to you as a gift. But what you don't realize, they don't come alone. The things that the Gentiles are looking for and pagans, eat, drink, and all those things, have been handed over to the kingdom. They are given to the kingdom and righteousness. And any man who possesses the kingdom and righteousness of God automatically will possess the things that come with the kingdom and righteousness. Are you following what I'm saying? 
you may be disqualified even as you think in your mind it is fine but you can be qualified by the very fact that you have found the kingdom and because you have found the kingdom then the things that come with the kingdom become a part of you he that walks with the wise is it's not that he began of, but he decided to walk with the wise he became so he that has located the kingdom and found the kingdom and his righteousness must also benefit from the things that are handed over to the kingdom. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hypocrisy in the kingdom. Hypocrisy in the kingdom. Hallelujah. We, we, we are in the kingdom of God. Especially if you receive Christ as the Lord and Savior. The instruction is one and simple. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah. In Luke 17 verses 20, let me touch about the kingdom. I didn't want to go there, but let me touch there briefly and then now move to my direction. The Bible says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, Jesus was demanded he kept on preaching to them these things. Seek first the kingdom. That's right. So they demanded him. The Pharisees came and said, okay, you have told us kingdom. They demanded. When he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. You're telling us to seek the kingdom? Okay, when is it coming? He answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. So he now and, and these are the things I want you to follow. He, he enters into their mind and sees they've been receiving a teaching which is wrong. Who told you that the kingdom of God comes? And it's a wrong teaching. They are, remember they are Pharisees, teachers. And they are teaching masses and people. But he's saying, who, who told you the kingdom of God comes? So he's correcting a false teaching that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. You don't observe it. You don't observe its coming. You don't see. You don't look for it in a location and a place. Praise the Lord. Does not come with observation. The kingdom of God indeed comes, but does not come with observation. The Bible says in verses number 21, Neither shall they say. So also be careful when people begin to speak and teachers begin to teach and say, say, neither shall they say, law here or law there. For behold, when they tell you that go to such and such a place, go to such and such a country, go to such and such a location, you find the kingdom. Don't waste your time. That's what he's saying. You will not find it Praise the Lord. Are we together? Are we together? You will not find it. It's not there. But he's saying, behold. Now see, I'm opening your eyes. Behold, the kingdom of God is not will be or was, but is now. It's not going to come at a certain date. Neither did it come before my appearance. But he's saying, the kingdom of God is present now within you is within you is within you oh i need time to go into all that but i don't have that time praise the lord jesus christ the kingdom of god is he's telling you if you must look for a location of the kingdom the kingdom is not outwardly the kingdom is in in a man praise the lord jesus christ praise the lord jesus christ it is inside. That's why you cannot see it. It's not by observation. Because it is locked up inside. If you choose to use eyes that are physical, you'll never see the kingdom. You'll be deceived. Because it is inside. Remember Jesus is, himself is God. Coming from God. Coming from heaven. The very kingdom. And the Pharisees are asking the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God. That, that tells you the kingdom does not come by observation. Because if they could see that this is the kingdom, they would not be asking him, when will the kingdom of God come? 
Because he is the kingdom of God. So if you're going to use eyes, you're going to fail to see the kingdom. It will be present with you. Jesus, the giver of eternal life, was present. But men ended up in hell when life was present. Misconceptions and ideas, teachings. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is within. The kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is. Oh, I repeat. The kingdom of God is. It is locked up. That's why he says, are you not of much more value? You can't carry the kingdom of God. And then you are not valuable. You can have the kingdom of God and then you are weak. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, 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 now. To you and me, he's saying, seek you first the kingdom of God. And he didn't leave us blind. He also told us where to find the kingdom. So if you must be seeking and you have made a decision to seek the kingdom, please do not go looking in different locations because you will not find it. Do not use the eyes because you will not see it. The kingdom is within. The kingdom is... So he's telling you there is another set of eyes and abilities that you need from him to be able to locate the kingdom and then the kingdom becomes effective to you, blesses you seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness and then all these things shall be added to you do you have an eye to see the kingdom when it is presented to you can you tell when Jesus comes, can you know when the kingdom has arrived he says, it's within. So he's already telling you, don't go to heaven looking for the kingdom. Don't go down looking. For, it's within. Within a person. If you must look, look for the person who has, who has managed to swallow the kingdom. And he's walking like Jesus. That person is your deliverance. And when you don't look at the physical, because the physical is deceptive. May he quicken you that you may see beyond the physical. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day, the kingdom of God is presented to men. But men, men, that's the problem. We have ideas of how these things should work. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Once you find them, they are delivered to you as a gift. He can't tell you to seek something that cannot be found. And he can't tell you to seek something that is far and hidden from you. He's telling you that he is just there with you, next to you. But can you discern and see, perceive it? Seek you first. Now, because of the struggles of men, failing to know the way and seeking to follow the instruction and the ways of the Lord, you know what they do? Now they operate like pagans. They go after the things that are given to the kingdom instead of seeking the kingdom. Labor not to be rich. For those very riches that you labor for will one day grow wings and fly Away. That's what he says. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Your labors should be in seeking to find the kingdom as number one every day. The kingdom has opened its doors and its gates and it's waiting for the sons of the kingdom to come and enter. That's why you find a man like Paul. He says, follow me as I follow Jesus. I have found the kingdom. 
And be sure when you follow me, you, you are following the kingdom, not me. He says, follow me. As He didn't say, follow me. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. He didn't say that. Follow me. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. He said, be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Meaning, first, the first thing you should find out is, who am I following? Who am I following? That matters before you follow me. Who am I following? I am a follower of Christ. Is there evidence of Christ? Then when you see that, follow me. The day you don't see that, don't follow. The condition is Christ. Then you follow me. If it is not Christ, then don't. But then, if you are not schooled in the things of the kingdom, you don't know the kingdom, you have no knowledge of the kingdom, how will you know what is following? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But seek you first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be. And all these things shall be. The Pharisees are coming to him. And he's giving them a lesson and a lecture. Please. The kingdom does not come by observation. Neither will they say here or there. Because it's within. Now, Because they did not want to submit to the kingdom. They sought another way. And the Pharisees, remember, according to those days, they are representing the kingdom. But they don't even know what they are representing. Now, Jesus seeing them, in one moment, he gave a report on them. Which is now in Matthew chapter 23, verses number 23. He says, NIV. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. What to you teachers of the law and remember those who came to ask him a question. The ones who demanded when will the kingdom come. Isn't it so? He says teachers of the law and Pharisees. He calls them you hypocrites. You hypocrites. You hypocrites. Hypocrisy in the kingdom of God. You, hippo, you need to understand, they are teachers of the word, teachers of the law, and Pharisees. But look at the one they are, they are saying they are following after, or they are trying to present to the people. The report is giving them, is saying that you are hypocrites. You are what? Why did he call them hypocrites? You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin. So you do tithe. That is good. But you have neglected, but you have neglected the more important matters of the... You have neglected. Not that these matters are not, are not there are not, and they are not known. They are available. And they can be known. But they have chosen to neglect. Not that they are ignorant. They have chosen to neglect. You have neglected the more important matters of the law. That is justice, mercy, and faithfulness. He says, you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. So you should have practiced the important matters of the law without ignoring also the tithing. So this is what happens when hypocrisy is at play. You switch what is major or important and put it in a place where it's not supposed to be. You have neglected the more important matters. You concentrate on tithing, but when it comes to the important matters of justice, mercy, and faithfulness, you neglect Because these things have no benefit to you. They will not soothe and they will not help you to achieve that which you want. Remember, they are looking for clothing, eating and drinking and all those things. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So when they go to teach, they don't teach about the more important things that bring about these things. They go and teach more about the tithings. Because their money comes. 
He calls such paganism. These are Gentiles and pagans. In the church, meanwhile, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, these are hypocrites. When you study the word hypocrites or hypocrisy, it is so interesting. Go deeper into it from the Greek. Bring it back to English. It means pretender. A pretender. A what? It also means an actor. A what? A what? It also means a stage player. A what again? A what again? Are you following the things I'm telling you? Are you following what I'm saying? Hypocrisy. You act. You show one side. But the other side. The true side is left behind. The side that is not real is what is presented. They are ministering tithing, but the true matters that lead men into tithing is not the tithing. It is when you minister the truth by the law, which is justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Automatically, men will be convicted and taught by the Holy Ghost to do the tithing. So, they have learned a skill. If you continue in verse 25. Thank you, Jesus. Verses 25. He says, What to you teachers of the law and Pharisees? You hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish. But inside, they are full of greed and self-indulgence. See, see, see now. They concentrate on the outside of the cup. Make sure that my image is important. So they work on the, they've managed to achieve a skill of working on the outwards, beautifying so much. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It outwardly super. They have learned the skill of dress code. They have learned the skill of speaking and talking, delivering a sermon, delivering a speech, delivering whatever it is, a keynote speech, those things. They are very good. They work on the outward, but inwardly they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Every wickedness is inside them. The Bible in Psalms 55 verse 21 says that his, the words of his mouth are smooth. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. When he's speaking, he has learned the skill of speech. He's a smooth talker. Can't convince you. Can't say things that will move you in ways that you cannot even imagine. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. Inwardly, inside. That's where you find the truth. Outwardly, the picture is a manipulated picture. And unfortunately, that's how many of the children of God are. He has told them to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But they've learned a skill of how to seek other things which he has not instructed them like the pagans. The teachings on the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness are available. There is a class where the Pharisees and teachers of the law can enroll, but that class is in the kingdom. So they must first of all access the kingdom. 
and meet the demands of the kingdom. To be given the opportunity to study in that institution. There is no institution you're going to go to a school and you begin to be taught without you first meeting the conditions, the rules, the terms, the requirements of that institution. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? Now, because of the requirements, like what we are seeing already, he says, you clean the outward, but the inward. The requirement of the kingdom is the inward. Because the kingdom is within. The requirement of him that must seek the kingdom to find the kingdom must deal with the inward because the purpose that the Lord is working out is that the kingdom must find expression inside you. It must be dwelling in you because other men must seek for the kingdom. And when they are seeking, they must find you. They must find you. That's what Apostle Paul says. I no longer live the life I live is not mine. I died. I found the kingdom. That's what he's trying to say. And what you see expressed in me is the kingdom, not me. That's why at some point he says, we seem like as if we are poor and weak, yet we make many rich. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So please, the question is, this is, I'm telling you what the children of God are struggling with today. They are disobedient to the Lord. God is saying the kingdom and his righteousness first. they are saying, uh-uh, other things must come first. Check the prayer that is raised before him. Nothing to do with the kingdom of God and righteousness, but everything to do with the marriage, my wife, my children, my money, my this, my promotion. My da -da -da -da. What is that going to help? Eh, the Gentiles are seeking after that. How are you different from the Gentiles? Except hypocrisy is working. To leave the major things and you begin to focus on the minor, it is hypocrisy in the kingdom of God. The prayer life of many is full of hypocrisy. That's why you see the evil motives cannot be answered. There's no answer coming forth. No one has found the kingdom and the kingdom is working in them. And then they are sick. Why are men sick today? It's simply because they have gone after another way other than the way of the Lord. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How then will health ever escape you? It cannot it cannot. And let me tell you, when you decide to follow and seek the kingdom, you will be mocked. You'll be called things. Satan will put pressure on you. Debts will come from every angle. Pain attacks on all those things. But please, I'm warning and encouraging you, do not stop. Do you know why all these things are happening? It's simply because you are now walking in the way. He says, narrow is the way. Small and tight is the gate that leads to life. It means that if you're fat, you must lose weight. If you're heavy, there are things that need to be taken off your life. Because you cannot go through a narrow door, a narrow gate, and a narrow way when you're overweight. So there are some friends that have to leave your life. They are causing weight in you. There are some things that have to leave you. Things to do with those phones and everything you're checking. Every now and then you're checking every other news. New entrance. It's my new dresses. New fashion. New cars. New everything. All these things, they are heaviness to you. With that weight, you cannot walk the path that leads to life. This anger and bitterness, it's hypocrisy at the highest level. Because what the spirit of hypocrisy does, it manipulates a man. It manipulates his mind. It turns his mind away from following the Lord, the major things that he has instructed. And then he goes on to follow things that are not major, minors. Once it has managed to manipulate the man, then it uses that person to manipulate others. So in the kingdom, I'm telling you, this spirit is a spirit of manipulation. They're insisting on tithe. God's, someone on that day has nothing to do with tithe. 
He's saying justice, mercy, faithfulness. Where has tithe come from? Except the spirit of manipulation is at work. Before I pray for you, some say, first put a seed. Freely you have received, freely give. Where did you get the power from? We can't buy. Except you have been manipulated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Except there is a manipulation that has taken effect in your life. That's why you go on to want to manipulate others. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Some, through the spirit of manipulation, can't speak, I'm praying for you. Who has asked you anyway? The point in saying I'm praying for you is simply to manipulate the mind of such a person that they may now be favorable towards you. And because it's a spirit of manipulation, you always seek those whom you think they have something that they can reward you with. Whether it's money, um, access, and all those things. So you go and speak things. Oh, I'm praying for you. The Lord has revealed to me that very soon a door is opening. No, you're opening your own door. You want to open your own door through them. You're saying, please bring something. Manipulation, hypocrisy is the hypocritical spirit. If you're here today, you are saved. You have received the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior over a period that is beyond a year. And you do not know your purpose for which he called you into the kingdom. You are among them that are hypocrites. Because the way he actually sustains us is when now we begin to walk in the purpose for which he called us for. Everything we need, our Father keeps on encouraging and says it again and again by the Spirit of the living God. That a man's future, a man's wealth, a man's prosperity, a man's health is in his calling. Now, if everything you need today, if I tell you that now you need money, there is 10 million, I've put it in this house, are you going to tell me that you, the way I am seeing you and the way you're looking at me, you will not go to that house and search until you get it? You will. Because, you know, they, I've not told you exactly where the 10 million is. I'll tell you it's in that house. You will go. Whether it's climbing the roof and it's hot, there are rats and all things, snakes, you say, I must get the 10 million. It doesn't matter the snakes. I will get it. You buy every snake repellent, every drug that you know can kill rats, hire all those guys that know how to uh, kill all these rodents and insects and everything and make sure that you take over the role. You don't allow them to take over the role because they can find the money and take it from you. So you say, train me. You, they train you. enter and do the things. The point is what? Money hidden there. How I wish you would see the kingdom of God in that way. How I wish you would see it that way. If you could see it that way, then you will spend everything you have to just find that. And when you have found it, you have found life. When you have found it, you have found you are a child of God. One full year. You don't know your purpose to which he called you for in this kingdom. You are a disappointment. You are, I'm saying it again, a disappointment. You're numbered amongst them that are hypocrites. Because after one year, what are you still doing? Which route are you taking? What direction are you going? What are you doing? Which way? It's like the Pharisees. You will become a manipulator. I fail to find the way. Then what do I do? The Pharisees don't know the true gospel. About justice, faithfulness and mercy. But yet they are still preaching. What are they preaching? Except now you are manipulating. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is, there is hypocrisy toward man to man. Where you're hypocritical toward the brother sister. 
like what we're reading in Psalms 55, 21. His words were smoother than butter. But in his heart was war. His words were softer than oil. Yet were drawn swords. Yet these very words here, they are, they are spears. They are knives. They come to rip apart friendships, ministries, whatever it is. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in, in Psalm 60, 62 verses number 4, he talks about his lips, how the lips, how, how is his heart full of war? You see, he says, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. In the, with the mouth, they are speaking good. They've learned that skill, they've trained. They failed to look for the kingdom, so they looked for another way of survival. They have learned to speak well, smooth things, but inwardly, war, war, and swords are coming out. People come and say, oh, praise the Lord, glory be to God. You're blessed, oh, God blessed you with what? This watch, ah, but inwardly, may it fail to even make time today. That's what they're saying about the watch. Let him get lost with his watch. <laughs> what a beautiful car. Like, ha, what a beautiful dress. Ladies. Nice hair. They touch the hair. But inwardly, they're releasing a castle. That's why you live when you're too confused at that moment. Too heavy and confused. Hypocrisy. That day, you can't pray. We have to come and do deliverance. Call. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Nice design. Wow. Te texture. <laughs> it's not texture. He's not checking the... When did you become an expert in the clothing to know the threads and all those things? You have no... We know you. You didn't study that. When did you know how beautiful and how heavy the thing is? There are swords being released. And to them who are not discerning, will go moving as, ah, oh, man, look, what you don't realize, you're moving with spears in your back. You're being pierced. You're being pierced. In your nice dress. It were better you didn't even put it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hypocrisy before one another. In Colossians 3, thank you Jesus, verse 22, the Bible says, obey your masters or your slaves. Obey your leaders, slaves. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to their flesh. Not with eye service. Hypocrisy, that's, why it, that's how it works. Eye service, eye service. Eye service. When you offer the service that is of the eye, the service which is of God, is from within. For out of the heart flows the issues of life, right? Even service flows from the heart. But eye service does not come from the heart. It comes from the eyes. What is inside the heart is hypocrisy. There is war. There is sword. There is hypocrisy. Eye service. Eye service. Eye service. Not with high service as men pleasers but in you see again hearts in maturity of hearts we don't serve we don't do things because we want to please men there is one who is beyond who sees beyond the eyes of men God and no one can reward you except him it doesn't matter what I tell you and I say you're blessed when he has not permitted it it cannot work when you're serving, you must know that you do not serve by the eye. Eye service is, I must serve that men see that I serve. I must come to church that men can see I'm in church. I must do this that men can see. That's the Pharisee. They clean the outside of the cup, but inwardly they are full of wickedness. 
And you see, the funny thing about this is, we have taken it to, I don't know whether it's this hardening of the heart, I believe so. The conscience is so dead that after you have played these funny things with men, you now begin to want to play it with God. There is hypocrisy toward God as well. He has said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then these things will come to you. Then you go to him. You have not sought his kingdom since morning up until now. Or since the other day up until now. Since they have begun up until now. Since all oh, when you lived up. Since you discovered the truth. You have not even dared to this. Go to him and ask, what is my purpose? Why did you call me? Why did you pick me out there? And then... You know you have been dodging him in that angle every day. Then you come to him. God, heal me. Lord Jesus, supply me food. Lord Jesus, give me hypocrisy. Do you know who you're dealing with? He has already told you, seek first the kingdom. If the report you must be coming to him is telling him that I'm trying to seek the kingdom, but I don't know what to do. Then he gives you an answer to that. I'm doing this. And then he directs you on what to do. He, ha he himself has got everything you want. Health, money, marriage, everything. And hid them in the kingdom. When you find the kingdom, that's where you find these things. Now you're coming to him to manipulate God. That God, give me the money without the kingdom. It won't happen. It won't happen. And it's God who said, to the wicked, I appear shrewd. So you come in wickedness. <laughs> he will permit you, but he will appear shrewd to you. He will show you. Psalms 18, verses 26. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the scripture. Psalms 18, 26. He says, with the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the fraud, you will show yourself fraud. NIV. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To the pure, you show yourself. To the pure, you show yourself. God has sights. He's telling you. He has sights. He has what? The pure, when they come, he appears pure to them. Because that's how they have appeared. Then he says, give me the scripture. But to the crooked, you show yourself. Ah, to the crooked, you show yourself. He's telling you, seek the kingdom first and his righteousness. Then for you, you're turning around like pagans to seek other things. Then you come to God. Oh God, I worship you. Oh, I lift my hands to you. To the crooked, he appears shrewd. So they've played it with men and learned the skill of appearing good before men. And think God sees the same way men see. No. God doesn't see that way. He sees differently. He uses another set of eyes. Play games with men, but never play with God. This is hypocrisy in the kingdom. They've learned how to stage act. They're stage players. They have a script that they follow, which is not of God. Actors. An actor can act on the stage to be the most loving man or woman. Yet when you find him in his free time, not on the stage, on another one, he's the most violent one. War comes out, beating the wife or the husband. Yet in the movie, hmm, you've learned to play movies, by the way. Praise, <laughs> praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people have learned to really act. They are sons and daughters of Pharisees and teachers of the law. Ah, say God forbid. Not me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Check your heart, the motive. Why is it that you don't have this thing? Why is it that you struggle? Why is it that this and this is coming? It is because of the hearts. There is a, a picture you want us to see. You, there is a picture I want you to see. Look at how I'm dressed up. But is it the same way I'm dressed inwardly? Can you see that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Is it how you're dressed? You know, when it comes to the inward, it is not man. You man can dress outwardly. He says, I have dressed the lilies of the field. How much more will I also dress you? There is a time when God has to dress you. He dresses the inside. The inside. The inside. He is the one that works on the inside. For it is him that is in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. He dresses the inside. He's the one to dress you. There is a particular dress coat, a uniform that attracts things. A uniform of favor. He will touch that character. He will go for that behavior. He will attack that attitude. You can't be with God and you're moving with God and you just speak everything. You, 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 just, you just find expression. Words just come out of your mouth. There's no God in that. Is God there bubbling all the time? Speaking, 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 speaking. No. If God has dressed you, you find the same expression that is in him. A king. A king is not always talking. But hypocritical men, because they are actors, there is no actor who is quiet. They are busy all the time. Stage players. They are speaking. They have to pull moves and all those things. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is so deadly. It's a cancer in the body of Christ. Do your own study. Go and ask born again Christians above they are in salvation. What is your purpose? Do you know your purpose? And if you know, are you pursuing the purpose? Look, you see. Is God crazy who designed the purpose for us? The thoughts that He has for us? The plans that He has? There's a reason as to why. It says Jeremiah, before you came in your mother's womb, I knew, I knew. And I made you this. This is your line. Move out of it, you'll never see anything. You think Jeremiah is unique from you? No. There is something God called you for. Do you know it? It's in the kingdom. As you pursue the kingdom, these things are manifested to you and revealed to you. And when they become known to you, then you have begun to live. In Isaiah 51 verses 1, it talks about them that are pursuing the kingdom in a different way. He says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. He says, look to the rock from which, the rock is Jesus. Look to the rock from which you are cut and to the quarry from which you are hewn. He's talking like Paul follow me even as I follow the rock Jesus praise the Lord Jesus Christ follow me here we say we are sons, daughters um, and all those things of Abraham verses number 2, the Bible says look to Abraham your father begin to study and observe Abraham your what? and he says and to Sarah who gave birth to you when I called him, he knew not why he was called. But when I called him, he was but one. And I blessed him and made him many. What happened when he called him? He says, go and look to your father, Abraham. What did he do? He was one, but he became many. It means he located the kingdom. He pursued after righteousness and the Lord. And the very Lord he pursued after now multiplied him and gave him all things that he, he desired in life. He called him at age 75. It's still early for you. You can find him and walk with him. And all things that you ever did, he will multiply you. If we can put away the hypocrisy, We come to God, and the things we want from him is to eat and drink. They came to him and told him, ah, Master, when did you cross over to this side? He said, you're not looking for me because you desire me and the kingdom. The reason why you have come is simply because of the food. 
and the bread that you ate the, the other day. He knew how men can be hypocrites. It was the food under John 6. Is it 24 26? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Master, hey, when did you cross over to this other side? Give me that scripture. Have you seen it? When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi. Oh, you see, they've learned the skill of acting. Pretenders. Players, just stage players. Rabbi. He even listen to that. Rabbi. <laughs> they give the titles. They speak in a smooth way like butter, like oil, words flow. Come, they're full of war and swords. Rabbi. When did you get here? Ah, they landed on the kingdom. <laughs> they thought they had landed on their fellow Pharisees and those things. Verse 26. Jesus answered. The kingdom now answered. I tell you the truth. You are looking for me not because you saw me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. You became full and now you're hungry, you're coming back. It's not because you want anything to do with the kingdom. That's what the Pharisees are doing. Pay tithe. Stomach is empty. That's why they're saying that. We need to eat. The other time we did, the, the food has now gotten down. Manipulators. Manipulators. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. What? Hypocrisy. You can't pretend before God. Pretend before men. But not before Pretend before men, but not before. My question is, when you appear before God, what are the things that you ask him? When he comes before you, if Jesus were to appear to you today, come physically to you, like in this case, he appeared to them. Or maybe they looked for him and found him. But look at the things they are saying. What is it that you want when you come before the Lord? What is it that you desire? Does his word hold any value to you? What he has to say, is it of more importance to you or what you have to tell him? This is where hypocrisy manifests. You find greatness, the Lord Jesus, whom we know very well, that he existed in the beginning as the word. And the word formed everything. And this word is God. And has been living and still lives and will forever live. He comes to you. And we have time to lecture the word. Instruct the word counsel the words. Guide him on how he who created me and you on how we should live. How he should help us. How he should make our life comfortable. Hypocrisy. 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 It should be that the creator should be the one to minister to the creation. Not the creation to instruct the creator. And he being around before you ever existed, I ever existed, he knows where, if he created this, he knows where he has put everything. He has placed them. It should be him to guide and tell us. And he has done that. Seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these things that you desire called security, protection along the way, and all these things, money, food, everything, children, all those things. He has them. And he knows where they are. If only you could listen. Don't go before greatness and you begin to speak and open your mouth and reveal all manner of lack of knowledge and understanding. Allow him to speak. And when he speaks, you take the word. Because his word is power. That's what produces in our life. 
He says, you shall live as man according to the word that come forth from my mouth, not according from what comes from your mouth. So when you come, I'm coming to minister. When I appear to you, I want to minister life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, let's learn to be humble. Forget about this outward look. Tomorrow you'll be exposed. He says, I will also expose their whitewash. Ezekiel 13, and verses number 13. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In my anger, I will unleash a violent wind. And in my anger, hailstorm and torrents and rain will fall with destructive fury. Uh -huh. The Bible says, I will tear down the wall you have, you have covered with whitewash. They have learned a skill of painting the wall. But inside, I will tear down the wall you have covered with whitewash and will level it to the ground so that its foundations will be people will see you for who you are when it falls you will be destroyed so you see he's talking about a person he's not talking about the wall he's saying human being you when the wall falls you will be destroyed not the wall so he's saying the person has learned how to cover cover clean the outside but inside something is wrong but I'm going to expose. The time comes when the Lord has to expose. You'll be destroyed in it. And you will know that I am. Oh, the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. Please, let's stop these things that we do. They're funny. Many have been comedians for a long time. And the heavens are not interested in comedy. Hallelujah. That thing you know that is within you, that you're trying to cover with whitewash, a time comes when it has to be exposed. And when it's exposed and laid bare, it will really embarrass you. It will really embarrass you. That anger that you hide within you, that double dealing and playing funny with God, I love you, but the thing in your heart, you're not dealing with it, it will embarrass you. He sees it. Him giving us time to correct ourselves and come to repentance doesn't necessarily mean that he's a fool. He's waiting. He wants you to be redeemed. But there is a time when the anger and the fury of the Lord is released. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Look nice. Put all nice things around you. Drive the best things. A time comes when all those things have to be exposed. They will run away. And you remain naked. Even as you have been from the beginning. Why, 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 is, that, why is that disease coming again and again? We have learned to blame every witch and wizard. But most of them have not even an effect in our life. The only reason why they have effect in us is simply because we carry things in us that belongs to them so they have a root and access. Jesus said the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me, meaning he can't touch me. In, he said in, in, because the kingdom is in a man. What I carry is the kingdom. The things that have effect on me are things to do with the kingdom. If you want healing, I will do that. If you want life, that's, those are the things we market and merchandise coming from the kingdom. That's what Jesus is saying. And the devil also markets his own things. Hallelujah. So please, let us divorce and separate ourselves from these things and be those who are on a pilgrimage on a journey looking for the kingdom, pursuing the kingdom. Every day, when we wake up, the kingdom is on our mind. When we go to sleep, the last conversation is the kingdom. When we are eating, it's the kingdom that we are feeding on. Until we find him. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your hearts. 
not with hypocrisy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If you must be effective in anything that you'll ever do in life, the kingdom. The kingdom. Fail in everything, but never fail to find the kingdom. Let them call you whatever they call you, but maintain that path of locating the kingdom every day. Like your father Abraham, he's leaving his father's home, Terra, and those Chaldeans, and they look at him and say, age, 20, age, age 75, what are you going to be? You're a failure, barren in every way, nothing. But look in his family, who do we know except him, where he came from, even today? Even today. At some point he was mocked, laughed at, because he has desired righteousness and to seek the Lord. And look what he is today. Oh, he has become a portal. Let me tell you something. Even for any man to get into heaven, to go now after death and be with the Lord, who come from heaven to come here, has to go through Adam, uh, Abraham. Sorry, He's a portal. That's for another time. That you can be effective by the things you're doing here. When you find the kingdom, it's not the thing that is of today. It's eternal. You have entered the life of eternity. That you're, you're effective here physically. You're effective even that side. You're known here. You're known that side. That's why demons tremble at the mention of the name Jesus. Because Jesus is not Jesus physical. He's Jesus physical. He's Jesus spiritual. He's Jesus everywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. May you find the kingdom. You'll not be sing again. You'll not be a one. You'll be multiplied. You'll increase. You'll prosper. you become too wide. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive me for hypocrisy. I pray I've done things as a hypocrite for a long time. I have manifested as a hypocrite. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for this hypocrisy. Forgive me before men, before you. Before men, before you. Before men, before you. Putting the important things behind and putting the less important things above and ahead. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. This war that is in my heart, these swords that are in me, I am busy blessing with the mouth, but inwardly cursing. I'm busy speaking by the mouth, but inwardly, I am bitter and angry with somebody. I am bitter and angry with so, 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 so. And before you, I come and lift my holy hands, which are actually very dirty and not holy at all because of what is in me speaking and telling you how you're holy yet inwardly I hate your child I hate the one that you have created in your image, I hate the sister and the brother and yet I am here saying I love you, no hypocrisy of the highest order Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy Lord have mercy, forgive me today, forgive me king of glory lift your voice and ask him for mercy, he has given you things you must do every day. You dodge those ones and you do other things. Then you come back to him and tell him, bless me. Open my door. Is it money? Keep me. Protect me on this journey. Yet you keep dodging him day by day. Ask him for mercy today. Ask him for mercy. Turn. Turn. A full year, two years, three years, four years, you have no knowledge of why God even called you, why God invited you, why God called you by name. Yet every day he wants to reveal this to you. But we keep running away from him, going here and the other, going here and the other, looking for things that are less important, emphasizing things that are not beneficial to us. But today it must change. Lord, I turn to you and I ask for mercy. I plead for mercy. I plead for mercy. I plead for mercy. Shut Lift your voice. Let him hear your voice today. Let him hear your voice right now. Turn today. 
He says, when you hear his voice, may you turn, may you turn, may you turn. When the Holy Spirit calls, may you turn. Do not harden. That's what we are told by our Father. Do not harden. Do not harden your heart. Do not harden. Do not remain a hypocrite. Do not remain. Do not be so self-righteous in the presence of the Lord. Before men it works, but before God it doesn't work. He sees the inside and he rewards us according to what he finds in our mind and in our hearts. That's what he gives us. He gives us. To the crooked, he appears shrewd. To the pure, he will be pure. Manda bakashi katala bako sekete. Jile ketele makoda ba jinde leba. Jekete leba ko sekete leba. Have mercy, King of Glory. Today I divorce from this spirit of manipulation. I divorce from this demon. I divorce from this force. I am tired of being a stage player, an actor, Lord. From today, I am tired of pretense, pretending every now and then. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my soul. Cleanse me, King of Kings. Make me whole today. Make me pure today. Complete me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your voice and ask him for mercy. To wash you. To make you clean. To make you whole. To make you pure. To make you complete. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shakaba Kota bari kaba shekete, jikete lebo shakaba bora, jalimando shekete le babo, rikande lebo shekete le makora, jiada baka shekete le babo shekete, likende lebo shekete le baka sakata, jakabo shekete le mamonda, riada baka shekete le babo, repete shekete le bako bo sende le babo, riada ba shekete le babo nde le bosite le ba, oba shande le bosikalaba, Lord cleans me today. Make me whole again. I am tired of this playing. I am tired of this comedy. I am tired of this circus. I am tired today, Lord. Help me. I want to know you. You called me, but I don't even know you. I've never met you. I've never heard you. I've never experienced you. Lord, I'm sorry. I am tired. I'm tired. I am tired of playing. I am tired of behaving like one who knows you when I don't. I'm tired of behaving like one who experiences you when I know nothing about you. I am tired of this stage action. I am tired of this skill. I am tired of the whitewash, Lord. Help me today. 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 Kaba shakatala baka sokoto. Zeketelebe koseketelebo. Look to your father Abraham. And to the one who bore you, sir. I called him, but he was one. And I blessed him and I multiplied him. And made him many. Because he found me. He pursued after righteousness. And sought the Lord. The rock from which he came. And the quarry from which he was hewn. And he received the blessing. The prosperity you're seeking after is hidden in him. When you find him, the kingdom. You found the prosperity. You found the blessing. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, have we turned to the Lord. You see, there are many that are busy doubting God and hate God because not of God but because of us. That's what he says in Romans 2, 24. The name of the Lord is blasphemed amongst the Gentiles because of... That's what he said. As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of... Not because of God, but because of... Not because of God, but because of... Ah, put the scripture, don't remove it, let them see it. Not because of God, but because of sinners hate God. Not because God has done anything wrong, but because of those who are in God. When they look at us and observe and check us when we are there in the workplace, when we are there in the homes, when we are wherever we are, they say, which God is this? They even hate God the more. Why? Because they have discovered we are, these guys are good and swift in their words. Smooth. They are full of funny things in them. 
They are very soft like oil. When they are speaking, oh, a, a, a saint, a child of God, getting a business deal is the most easiest thing. The words come to deliver, come to fulfillment of promises. Ah, we are something else. Verse 17 of that chapter. He's talking about the smooth talkers. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, Christian, if you rely on the law and brag about your relationship to God. The Bible says in verses 18, quickly, if you know his, <laughs> look at the progression of things. You know his, do you know his will? We're a Jew. You call yourself a Jew. But don't even know the will of God. You know, the principles of the faith. Not faith, but the faith. Anyway. If you know his will and approve of what is superior, you, you know the things that are very secretive in the kingdom. Because you are instructed, you are taught by the law. You are taught in the law. You are taught by, you are a master in the law. Now he goes on to say things there. Give me the scripture. He says, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, you are a guide, you are light, you are the light of the world. You are this thing that we say, light of the world, city on the hill. Da, 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 da. Uh-huh. The Bible says, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of infants, because you have in the law the embodiment of the knowledge and truth. You're a teacher. Because you are an instructor, you have learned the kingdom. You have learned this. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Give me the scripture. The Bible says in verse 21, please move fast. He says, you then, now he comes. He comes. You then. Who teaches others? Do you not teach yourself you who teaches others is talking to me now. So he's not talking to you. But if you have also your own classes, those things, he's talking to you, which I know you do. As long as a child of God, you, you're a teacher. The people are watching you. They see your behavior. They want to come to Jesus, but you're the door. You then, who? I want to show you a scripture. You then who teaches others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal from God? You preach and attack stealing. Yet when we go to the records of police there to look for thieves, your, number, your name ranks quickly. You who say that people should not commit adultery, do you not commit adultery? Fornication. How? Believing other gods other than God. Believing in other reports. Other, that's adultery. You go quickly to believe other things other than God. Quickly divorce from what God is saying and go and attach a, a, adultery spiritually. Adultery is not physical. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, you who are bores, idol, you hate idols. Do you rob temples? You rob temples. The temple of the Holy Ghost is this one. You. What is inside there? That's robbery. That thing you have there. Robbery. That is not the Holy Ghost. He says, you who brag about the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? He saying, seek first the kingdom. You break it and go on other things. He says, first... That's the day you don't want to do it. No instruction of the kingdom is desirable to you. Friday, prayer and fasting. Ah, they, don't they know ulcers? Don't they know? I've just come out of fastings. 40 days of mighty things. Continue your 40 days. Hallelujah. When a disease catches you, that's when you remember the 40 days. And he will remind you. I told you Friday, covenant of prayer and fasting for the church and the nation. He refused. He's not a fool to put prayer and fasting every Friday and then come again and cross it out and tell you, are you don't you exempted, do the other thing. 
something is wrong. That's why he says in verses 24, as it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. You have learned a skill of whitewash. You can instruct a guide, teacher. We have names. We have learned these things. Apostle, uh, pastor, teacher, all these beautiful things. Anointed. <laughs> That's circus. Here. What is inside us? That's what we should check. And if you find the inside is not good, go before him and say, I am sorry. I am wrong. Work on me. With all honesty, he will work on you. He will put you back right. You can't fail to be useful. If he managed to pick you while you were dead in sins back there, how much more now? What is impossible? There's nothing that is impossible. He can do the work, but it's us to submit to him. May we run away from this hypocrisy. These traditions that we follow and all these things of men. Hallelujah. Before the kingdom, the spirit realm, any hypocritical person is naked. 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 And he is a candidate of serious attacks. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and bless you and bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, it wasn't me. Now I'm talking as Joshua. Hallelujah. Forgive me if I've offended you. <laughs>